Hey y'all, it's Girls Headed Up X, and this is Ink Therapy. Today we are sitting here with the lovely Gia out of Brisbane, Australia. Gia, how long have you been tattooing? Um, about a year and a half now. How old are you? I'm 23. Wow, a year and a half. Okay. Yeah. And so just a baby. Just a baby. I love it. Absolutely gorgeous. Tattoos are bomb. If you don't follow Gia, follow her Instagram. It's at Gia underscore tattoo underscore. Um, again, um, 23 years old, year and a half tattooing, but still, if you follow her work on Instagram, you can see um, how amazing her work is. Do you feel like <laughs> you have grown a lot or have you always been you know, artistically inclined? Tell us a little bit more about your tattoo journey and, and how you got started. Yeah, um, I, I'd say I've always like, I've been good at art from maybe like 16. I, I don't know, I was shit before then. I have no idea what happened. Just like, <laughs> yeah, I was never good at it. And then one day I just like, I think I did a grid to start off with like doing a portrait and it just like all clicked, I guess. Yeah. And yeah, and I was doing like, I started painting um, like big portraits and like animals and stuff. And um, I never really, thought about tattooing I guess until maybe like I was 20 mm. and it was just so hard it was so hard to get into mm. especially in Brisbane like it's just it was such a hard thing I think I went around to so many um studios with my portfolio for years and couldn't get it and then yeah I think it was 21 and I was ready to like give up and like move overseas and then I went to this studio just down the like down the road and handed my portfolio in and they gave me a shot so it was like just like meant to happen I guess love it right on time perfect place yeah um do you think that you know I'm, I'm hearing about the struggle you know that you had uh you know during the you know time span where you were trying to turn in your portfolio and you know get a shot to you know believe in your ability to produce quality work do you feel as though that struggle was necessary or do you think people are just being assholes <laughs> or do you think <laughs> that you know we hear a lot about like the struggle of apprenticeships we hear a lot about you know the struggle of getting into a shop and being taken yeah. seriously you know as a tattoo artist tell me a little bit about your experience what do you think that what what do you think about all of that like is it necessary yeah. or were they yeah, really trying to give you a hard time no, it's like, it's hard, but it's like, it's meant to be hard. I think like, it's, it's such a rewarding industry that I think if you're not like the right personality for it, that it's just not going to work like long-term. Like if you're not a hard, like it's your own business. So if you don't push yourself, then you're not going to get anywhere. So I think that them pushing, well, not pushing you by pushing you sort of thing that yeah. you're going to do it yourself and you're going to do the work you know, put the work in to get somewhere and I think that that's what they want to see for sure so yeah I'm hearing you know theme underlying themes around grit perseverance how do you think that those things play a role you know in your current work like how were those things um you know beneficial for for where you are right yeah. now yeah Oh, it's just like, I'm just so relieved that I don't have to work that hard anymore. <laughs> oh, so I so done with all that. You don't even have I'm, to. Okay. <laughs> I know, I'm so privileged now. I'm like, oh, I'm like, I'm one, one job a day is too much now. <laughs> no, it was, yeah. I would like, I think when I first started my, so like in my apprenticeship for two years and then like six months in, I started tattooing, but I was only maybe tattooing once or twice a week for the first six months. Yeah. So it was still like, I still had to work a second job. So I was doing like for free at the tattoo shop from Monday to Saturday morning. And then I would work from like Thursday night to Sunday night at the, like in the clubs and the bartending. And it was just, I, I got sick so much. Like it was just my body. It was just like, ready to give up but yeah overworking yeah. two jobs one full-time during the day and one full-time in the evening yeah but just had to do it yeah like I knew what I wanted to do and where I wanted to get to so would you tell the your 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 customers at the bar that you were a tattoo artist or did that help get you some clients or was yeah it like your own little secret 
Yeah, no, no, I told, like, I wanted customers. I was like, I don't care who I'm tattooing. Just come yeah. in, do it for free. Just wanted, yeah, just wanted that experience. Just wanted to do it. So I was lucky. I was a bartender at, like, one of the strip clubs. So we had, like, all the girls were like, fuck, oh, yeah, let's get free tattoos. So that was, like, a majority of my clients to start with. So that was really good, yeah. Love it, love it. Yeah, Atlanta, uh, where I'm at, Atlanta, Georgia, is, is a self- uh, self-proclaimed uh, strip club capital of the world yeah <laughs> so um, um i definitely understand with with getting uh you know the girls as the clients honestly it's sometimes they are the, the the best type of clients to have because their work is going to be seen everywhere you know yeah kind yeah of that's it local celebrities so i think that 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 was probably that was a blessing in disguise <laughs> yeah that's it and they've also got like big social media followings as well so you know that also helps with exposure for sure for sure yeah uh so tell me a little bit more about your style and and how you describe that um so initially i like i wanted to get into realism mm. and then i think a few months down the track i just really liked drawing my own sort of designs and stuff I didn't really like copying things and it's just really realism is really hard as well so yeah yeah <laughs> so I just preferred my own sort of style I think I wouldn't quite call it neo trad but that would be how I describe it mm -hmm. I guess there's not really a way to put it but yeah like neo traditional or I'm starting to get into like neo Japanese as well um. So really loving like the Japanese stuff. So I think, yeah. Is there, um, is there a big Japanese influence where you are in Australia? Not, not really, hey, not really. There's some like sick Japanese artists, but they're like few and far between, I think that I've seen so far anyway. Like there's not really too many. So it seems like like you'll be uh, you know leading a, a new trend in, in that area that sounds pretty awesome i hope so yeah i hope so <laughs> definitely for sure there's a lot of there's a lot of traditional japanese mm. i think but more like the gothic neo traditional japanese i haven't seen too much of it so yeah i'm hoping that like a lot of people can you know maybe get into that mm -hmm. and come to me so. a, is there a, a a most popular style in Australia? Yeah, it's realism. Yeah. 100%. Yeah, yeah. Realism. Yeah. Maybe not so much in Brisbane. Um, it's still like a big thing. It's just a license to print money, basically, realism. But um, the like city that's maybe like an hour away at the Gold Coast, that is like very realism like based. There's I think there's like one traditional shop down there. There's like nothing there. Yeah. So it kind of seems like, you know, you've taken the craft and, and kind of uh, elevated it. <laughs> if you, it seems <laughs> like it's think think nicer outside of America, honestly. So <laughs> that's the vibe that I'm getting uh, from, from Australian tattoos. But you all are doing a great job of showing us that you know how to do. <laughs> Be better <laughs> but you know honestly I mean if we if we really get into it tattooing you know is an ancient art and so that's interesting to hear about the realism because I'm wondering you know I'm actually starting to get more curious about you know the history of tattooing in Australia is there anything that you know specifically that you know about how it originated there or like what sort of um, I guess like historical like tattoo practices there were if there were any is that something yeah. that, that you, you know, are, are well-versed in? I don't really know really too much about it. It obviously started with like traditional tattoos yeah. and um, like all the like older tattooists that I've worked with have always like told me stories about back in the day when they'd have to like make their own needles and like the one needle and like melt it together. I was like, oh, <laughs> could not imagine doing that now. I'd probably quit, but... <laughs> Yeah, I don't really know too much about it. I don't know where realism really came into the scene. It was more like like a bikey sort of thing for tattoos. Like that was that was where it started. Yeah. Sort of maybe like 20 years ago. That's when it started getting popular. And then maybe like people have realized that it's not just for like, you know, criminals and you know, it's a cool self-expression now. 
definitely. So definitely. we're way past yeah. that. I'm, I'm so happy that we're way past the criminal yeah. and Navy mm -hmm. personnel. Uh, but I think that's important, you know, for us to highlight and for us to, you know, mention during, uh, you know, interviews like this, because I do think that um, America has a, a tendency, an unhealthy tendency rather to try to make uh, us the center of everything. You know, and like yeah. try to say, like we are the people. Like we are tattoo history is very rich, but at the same time, like so is everybody else's. You know, and it's not like we invented this. You know, definitely <laughs> not. Like it's something. No. It's, it's an ancient art. Like like we just said. You know, and uh, yeah, like there's like mummies from two thousand years ago or something that have got tattoos on them from like India and Nepal. It's cool. Yeah. So cool. Definitely, definitely super cool. Uh, so I, I know you're not a fan of making your own needles, of you know tying the string together, and you know. Like I said, I'm privileged now. <laughs> maybe maybe I'm, at the start of my apprenticeship. Look, <laughs> girl, I support it fully. Work uh, smarter, not harder. That's always my motto. That's it. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> but um, you know, talk to me a little bit more about uh, you know, the the products that you enjoy using most while tattooing yeah okay um well i learned on a coil machine originally and then um so i moved to a new shop maybe like a year into my apprenticeship and um was given like a rotary from my boss and just like game changer upgrade <laughs> yeah cool game changer so um that was like the swash drive version six i think um it was yeah it's pretty good i still use it to this day for like um, like smaller lines, like three liners yeah. generally, because I've moved on to pens now. Love my pens. Yeah. So, cordless. <laughs> yeah, I just, uh, <laughs> I haven't gone cordless yet, but I think that that's like next step. Okay. But I'm still like trying to hold on to like the traditional tattooing with like the oh, cord yeah, and, you funny. know, they're like fucking get caught on shit and like, yeah, yeah. without the struggle, like what would it be? <laughs> but, um, yeah, I use pens now, so I've got, I did have a Zion, um, I think Spectra Zion. Yeah, um, I bought that a month ago, but I've got to send it back, it's broken, but it was like, yeah, it's like a great machine when it works. Uh, <laughs> so I've got to send that back and get it fixed. But yeah, I'm excited. It's just like an all rounder, so I can do like all my shading and lining with it. Um, I just wouldn't like, I don't really like cartridges for like thinner line, like anything under a five liner. I think it just like, just doesn't just do the job. Hey, so yeah, I just use my swash drive okay. machine for anything smaller. So what about ink brands? Um, I use dynamic. Okay. I love the, yeah, I love the triple black, especially for like my like honey masks that I've been doing. Mm. So yeah, I've been using that. Um, but like a softer black, I will use just the normal yeah. dynamic black. Really love that. Mm -hmm. And I mix it. Um, I mix like my gray washes with like a good amount of the dynamic white as well. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And then um, for my white highlights, I think I will, I use um, world famous ink mm -hmm. for the white. Yeah. It's super, super creamy and yeah, it just like pops off. So I love that. That's awesome. Yeah. Especially on darker, like darker skin. Yeah, it goes in so well. Yeah. Well, talk to us a little bit more about, um, yeah. I guess, success. You know, I want, I'm curious to know what success has looked like to you. You know, you, you have not been tattooing that long. Talk to us a little bit more about success and what that looks like. Um, I guess just being like constantly booked. Mm -hmm. So ever since like we were locked down and then opened back up again, it's just sort of like been a snowball effect. Yeah. being constantly booked and I think that when that all dies down if I'm still booked then I think that that to me is successful mm -hmm. also um just like continuing to grow as as an artist like I look at stuff that I did when I first started and it's just like it was awful mm -hmm. so I think just constantly getting better and trying to improve those is like all I do is draw like I get like I've had all day and then I come home and I draw all night so it's just, yeah, I don't actually, I don't really understand the drive behind it. I just want to succeed. Mm. Yeah. I just, yeah. I just kind of want to prove to myself that I can do it. You know? I get that. Yeah. I think that, that perfect, that leads me perfectly into my next question. That makes me think about, you know, I'm 
what inspires you. You know, it sounds like mm-hmm. you are a very like goal driven individual. Uh, you know, someone who's not you know satisfied with you know the mediocre baseline um, or anybody else's standards. You know, it seems like you're over here. You know, setting your own standards and yeah. your own goals. So. What, yeah. what, what's inspiring to you? What's making you, what, what's bringing these creative images to your mind? Um, yeah. Well, I guess it's just like, why do it if you're not going to be the best, I guess. Mm. So I, don't know, I just see all these other like great, I can't go on Instagram anymore. It just like, I'm like, wow, aren't this good yet? <laughs> I see all these like guys that are traveling all over. The, I think it's like, I just want to travel. Yeah. So yeah, and be like paid to do it, be able to do cool shit every day. Like, yeah, I think it's me. I'm trying to do what I want to do every day. And then if I get to the point that I'm successful, then that would be me doing like cool shit every day, I guess. Not having to do like, like I still enjoy like talking to people and doing like little ones every now and then. But yeah, I think the end goal is just to do like, my own designs put them out there and then people go like fuck yeah I want that and then we do that every day hell yeah Yeah. are you the only female artist at your shop yeah so tell me about that tell me do do you feel like that has any holds any weight any influence in how hard you work as far as as far as you know needing to make a name for yourself needing to prove to yourself you know that you as a female tattoo artist which is still uh, it's, it's still, still not a thing yeah yeah it's not a thing I was about to say it's rare but then I hesitated because I'm like well there are a lot but it, honestly in you know in in retrospect if we you know think back to how long that this art has been a you know a trend it's honestly there the number of men tattoo artists it doesn't it doesn't compare you know uh, so I'm just wondering what impact that has had on your tattoo journey yeah um so I think in every so I've been in two shops so far and I've been the only female in both of them um I think it was just dealing with like in the first shop that I was apparently treated like better because I was a female but I was still working twice as hard as the other the right. other guys so Which women it was like do. <laughs> yeah so I was just dealing with that like I'm still working hard I don't know what you mean by like yeah um but in this shop like yeah I haven't really had any problems being a female if anything it's gotten me more work because people want sometimes just a female artist yeah. so I yeah. Fuck I'm, yeah, that's I'm, I'm not mad I'm not mad look I would want yeah. to get under a beautiful woman as well if I had to go through the pain I I would like to enjoy that as well so I get it 100 percent yeah so. what's uh what do you think has been the most difficult thing about being a tattoo artist Oh, I think other titleists, I think. <laughs> yeah. Hey, tell me more about like, that. They're making it hard for you, don't you? <laughs> it's a hard, it's a hard industry. It's a hard world. Yeah. I think it's just dealing with like, I don't know, just the competition. Mm. And then sometimes just like a little bit of jealousy sometimes, a bit of ego mm. can happen, but. You know, so is it just gonna- criticism are they are they you know are they ragging on your tattoos or are they you know is it is it more of like opportunity thing like they won't let you engage with them in a certain way like tell me more about what specifically artists are doing that make it difficult it's more just like opportunity I guess so like doing things that they like haven't done yet or can't do mostly yeah. like it's just like having families and so like they're a few more years into their career and I'm only sort of just starting and I've got like I've got big goals and they're sort of like yeah that I don't know that they're maybe like stuck Mm. but it's like you can still do these things like and I'm happy to help like fucking anyone that you know needs any help but I feel a bit weird giving advice only so like so young into my career I guess but I think that's so interesting. You know, I'm thinking about other careers. I'm thinking about doctors, um, you know, lawyers. I'm thinking about, you know, people maybe in a more like, um, I don't really know how to describe it, but I just feel like that issue, right? Like more when people think professional, right? Like the ideal 
uh, you know, paradigm around being a professional. Those, yeah. those careers is not the same type of bullshit <laughs> that you go through <laughs> when you're a creative. And to yeah. me, that honestly is like, have, have you ever heard the expression crabs in a barrel? No. Okay. No, so, so it might be a strictly American thing, but when we <laughs> say crabs, and honestly, it might be a strictly Black American thing now that I'm thinking about this. <laughs> uh, when we say crabs in a barrel, you know, if, if you put a whole bunch of crabs in a barrel, they're going to be trying to get out. But at the same time, they're going to try to pull another crab down in order for them to get up. You know, yeah. and, and the, yeah. the, the idea behind that is fucking bonkers. It's just it doesn't <laughs> make any sense because the, the amount of power that they would have if they work together, yeah. like, it yeah, doesn't exactly. even compare to, you know, the amount of work and energy that they're exerting, trying to compete with each other. So I'm thinking of like, you know, when we're thinking about the stereotypical professionals, doctors, lawyers, you always hear about these mentorship programs and, you know, oh, I'm yeah. going to connect you with this person because they are, you know, super proficient in this area. But then when you get into a creative career setting, I always see such inappropriate, like you said, jealousy, competition. And I just think that that's, yeah, it's ridiculous, you know? And, <laughs> and I honestly think that when you start to behave in that manner, you're honestly not really authentically here for the art because yeah. you want yeah. you to get better, right? I want, yeah. I want you to learn so that you can teach me something and I can teach you something and together yeah, exactly. with our powers combined, you know, <laughs> we can make like some magical, exactly, we can make some magical shit happen, but I'm, for some reason, creatives don't do that. And I'm wondering yeah. if it has anything to do with the, you know, the value that so many, that society has set to, uh, you know, work produced by creatives you know like uh, uh, yeah um, it's not it's not something that is a very high paid job most of yeah them, it's also right? just something that's very like specific as well so I don't understand why there is so much jealousy in the industry I think it, it might just be like who we are as creatives mm. but maybe we're just protective yeah like but if well this was like a saying from the strip club and it was like you could be the ripest juiciest peach in the world but someone might not like peaches mm. and I think that's the same with art like you could be bomb as fuck and not and like someone won't like it like but then like someone else will love their stuff so I really don't understand the whole the jealousy in it mm -hmm, mm -hmm. interesting yeah that's something that that really keeps me up at night <laughs> <laughs> and uh I wish that um it were more focused on just development. If we focus on development, less on the competition, um, then I feel like, and honestly, you know, they say the top is lonely. I feel like the, there's so much room at the top. There's so much yeah. room. And, yeah. uh, and when you- I get it too. Like I get that <laughs> jealousy slash envy for those, those top artists, but instead of like letting it tear me down I use it as like a fuck yeah I want to get to that point like right. and I'm excited right? for you instead of yeah. going in on them and saying like oh like how you said owning that jealousy changing it and turning it into something yeah. beneficial like oh it's actually that's what excitement is you know and I'm and yeah. I, um I'm looking forward to getting there to that, to that point. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, doing whatever it takes. That's it. Yeah. It's interesting. Well, I'll get off my soapbox uh, and back and go on <laughs> and on. Uh, what what age did you start getting tattooed? Um, I think it was my like my 18th first week. Yeah, I don't know what it is. is it 18 over there that you can get tattooed. 18 is, is the legal age, and some some states, some cities, it, you know, it varies. Um, you might be able to do 16 with a parent consent yeah um, but for the majority, majority. yeah it's yeah basically. yeah so it's the same here I'm from like I'm from the bush and I had a friend that um he was a tattooist but he like wasn't in the shop anymore yeah. and he was like no you're gonna wait till you're 18 and I was like fine and then I think it was like the week of my 18th birthday he's like surprise tattoo for me and I like went in we did it in like the back of his like garage 
<laughs> and I got I was this it was the rose one it was so that's a that's a it. badass first tattoo <laughs> it's not yeah it's not bad it was like an hour and I think I cried so <laughs> but it was good it was good I traded this is how Australian I am I traded like a ute shell that was sitting on my farm I traded the tattoo for that oh my gosh we're gonna post yeah. a picture of a ute shell because I have no idea uh so what? like so like a, a ute like a I don't is that what you call it <laughs> over I, there I'm about like to a car like, oh, like okay a car. okay mm -hmm. yeah like a ute, a ute car but like just without the motor it's just like just the shell of it love it and yeah, it, and you had that in your possession because yeah, I had that out in the paddock. And Look. he was like, "I want that," and I was like, "I'll get a tattoo for that." Thank you. <laughs> no, I definitely think that was a great trade for that rose. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> um, what is the most interesting thing a client has asked of you? Whether it be good, bad something in between the most interesting ask i don't think i can like pin it down hey <laughs> people are like people are pretty normal i guess sometimes good it's like I, I get pretty normal clients but like maybe my i'd say my boss gets like the weirdest clients okay so we, yeah so our shop is in like a bit of a bogan part of town okay. i would say yeah what, so. what's that mean what's bogan part of town tell me a little bit more <laughs> just like a, just a few like homeless people okay. and like okay just okay. like it's nothing sketchy it's nothing it's sketchy around the town. <laughs> it's sketchy yeah it's sketchy there's okay. nothing really around it's like there's no trees like it's just like yeah there's this old dude and he would be like 80 years old hey and he like i see him in the morning when i get to work and we've got like the car park yeah and he's in like full hockey gear Love it. Like hockey stick and everything and just like skates around the car park. It's Ready like, to work. Ready yeah, to work. that's like, that's where our shop is. So yeah, it's just weird shit every day, honestly. Absolutely love it. <laughs> what, um, what's the most challenging tattoo that you feel like you've had recently? Um, I think anything like on the stomach, especially when people are like raggedy breathers. Mm. um also maybe like necks I avoid doing necks now not really a fan quite yet I think I still need to like work on the tattooing before I start to get to like yeah it's just stretchy and it's like shitty skin as well it's just like yeah and you gotta stretch it out so much and it still doesn't go in mm. um I think like just all my tattoos I'm trying to work on like consistency mm -hmm. so like I think more like the effort and actually put like the drawings and putting in like the shape, like shading before I've done the tattoo. Mm. So I think that the picture is like the stencil is the most important thing because then I know exactly what I'm doing when I go into it. And I think that that's helped with the consistency. For sure. For sure. And that's mm. me. I, lo I love to talk to artists about consistency. I feel like that's, um, you know, that's one of the ways that you're going to maintain your clientele. Um, if I can trust that what I'm seeing, you know, on social media, what I've seen on other people, yeah. is what I'm going to yeah. get, then I, yeah. can, I can give you my money. Um, so tell me a little bit more about your use of stencils. Are you into freehand? Are you strictly stenciling? I'm a bit, I'm a bit of both. Okay. So especially with the Japanese lately, like it comes pretty naturally mm -hmm. to me. So with that, it's been pretty easy to like freehand quite a bit of stuff. Yeah. So especially with my masks, I'm just doing like the basic outline shape of it For sure. and then just filling in all my details and stuff like as I, as I go. Sure. So yeah. And like with backgrounds and stuff or like even like with the rope that they have usually attached to the masks, so I'll like freehand that around the body shape. So it works better. Yeah. yeah. Yes, 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 yes. I think that um, that's honestly one of the best ways to do it is a combination of both because right. you know stencil is always going to guide you but like how you said the the flow of the body that's really going to make or break your tattoo <laughs> if it yeah. looks like it's not supposed to be there <laughs> yeah it's not gonna work yeah <laughs> what advice would you give somebody who's getting their first tattoo um, well like if they've already picked an artist 
I would say just like for the day, mm -hmm. if that if that's what you mean, just like a good feed, good feed beforehand, some yeah. orange juice, some sugar, bring some snacks. Um, for people that like haven't been tattooed before and haven't found an artist, I would like, I would research. I would research a lot. Don't get your friend to do it in the back of the garage. Like, damn. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, like if they're if they're good and you know, you gotta pay that little bit of extra money sometimes for people that are really good, like it's worth it. It's gonna be on you forever. So in what ways has tattooing been therapeutic for you? Whether it's the artist side or the client side, tell us a little bit more about the therapeutic aspects that you can identify. Yeah, sweet. Um, I guess it was just always what I wanted to do. So just the fact that I can go to work and just like create art every day with my mates, like mm. it just, it made me happy. And I think that that's like the goal in life really is to be happy, have something to work towards. Like I struggled when I was like before my apprenticeship, when I was younger, like I had no direction mm. in life. Like I was just doing shitty jobs, was working like shift work, mm. just hated it, you know? And then like, I found this, like this purpose and yeah, just doing that every day. It, yeah, it like lights my soul. Yeah. So, yeah, that's, I love that's that. Good. That's beautiful to hear and, and super inspiring. I'm so glad that um, you were able to, you know, find something that brings you joy and yeah. happy every day because that fucking matters. <laughs> and I feel yeah. like, you know, um, a lot of people are so willing to, uh, you know, put that as their second priority, right? Or yeah. pass on the priority list. It's like, no, yeah. happiness will come with the money, with the exposure, with the, yeah. when I'm a celebrity, when I'm whatever, when I am yeah. X. Yeah, so, when, so, when, 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 just gotta exactly. work it's, for it. <laughs> and and instead it. of trying new things, I think that's the scariest thing for a lot of people is trying new scary things. Scariest fuck to like give up on something steady and stable that's like, I, and you have like what 20 percent of like what you want to do but you know you can't get me drunk and take me out to the clubs because i'll be like i'll talk to someone and they'll be like hey my life and i'll be like do what you want to do right like, <laughs> just quit your job tomorrow like yeah, yeah. i get no, on, like I, a whole rant about it and so that's the but, yeah it's it's honestly a truth that a lot of people need to hear um, yeah is that it's it's completely possible for everyone to find something that makes them happy and keeps them financially comfortable. Yeah, um, it's completely possible for you know you to um, you know quit your job and still you know be happy your regular job. Um, I I love you know your story about yeah. you know how you had to still work in the bars and strip clubs while you were pursuing this and like that's part of it you know that's part of the the hard work but still you had something you know to to get you through those times something that you were able to look forward to and I love hearing that you're having conversation in the bars <laughs> and with the dancers like hey I'm trying to tattoo you for free come through <laughs> those I'll are get it. yeah that's the best all right we're gonna we're gonna shift just a little bit um into some tattoo news so uh, for those of you who have tuned in to um, my most recent show, I think it was a show with Bang and Danger Dave, you heard me mention the New York City Tattoo Convention. Um, no, this is not the Empire State Tattoo Convention that everyone has heard of. This is a new convention called the New York Tattoo Convention. Originally, it was in May, which we already knew that that was not going to happen, and that was terrible planning on their part. It has moved to September 3rd, 4th, and 5th of 2021. So make sure that if you have purchased tickets uh, for the New York Tattoo Convention that you um, are aware of those date changes. I think it's hilarious when people change dates and like do it on the down low like and then people make plans and buy tickets to be somewhere and then it's like oh you can't actually we're not doing it then. So I want to make sure everybody knows. So that's yeah. the New York Tattoo Convention. Um, and you can buy tickets at www.thenewyorktattooconvention.com. Uh, next piece of tattoo news. Sadly, the London Tattoo Convention 2021. Yeah, and from now on is over. <laughs> that 
that sucks, man. <laughs> honestly, I cried when I heard this. So this is honestly <laughs> a moment in history. <laughs> Yeah, honestly, I knew about the London Convention before I was even a tattooist, like, way back in school. Like, it was just such a big thing. Yeah. And that was, like, definitely a goal for any tattooist to get to be able to tattoo there. Yeah, yeah. But, and, yeah, it sucks. And more recently, I'm pretty sure, I'm not sure if you've heard anything about this, but was it, it starting to be invite only? Was it? Yeah. Yeah. Super expensive yeah. convention. You know, yeah. all of the who's who's were gonna be there. Yeah, that's like that's when you know that you like you fucking made it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so a a moment in history, um, but a lovely. I I think he phrased it in the most lovely way. Um, so much so that I can, I can let it go. I'm I'm upset about it, but you know we can let it go. I think that this, um, just opens new doors for new traditions. Um, yeah and um it we will never forget um uh, you know the london tattoo convention and all of you know the the artists who have helped make this convention what it is um but i do appreciate um you know him making that statement about about the transition yeah. and also all good things come to an end you know like you said 15 it. it's a long time when one door closes and two doors open, I guess. Love it. Love to hear it. Yeah. I, I agree completely. So I'm excited to see what other conventions are going to yeah. start to make, you know, a major name for themselves. All I right. think the, the rights of passage in Australia would be great. Definitely. Yeah, Definitely. yeah. Have uh, you heard of those? I, I have, um, yeah. but it, it's, is it happening this year or did it already happen? Um, so I think they've just announced that they've cancelled. So is the Melbourne, Sydney, Brisbane, other three, I think, or maybe Perth as well. So okay. the first two were in Melbourne and Sydney. I think they've been cancelled. But I think that the Brisbane one, since where I am, is maybe like still on track for July. Okay. Maybe. Fingers so. crossed. Fingers yeah, crossed. fingers crossed. It'll be interesting to see, you know, the impact of this pandemic. Um, with conventions. I was just talking to a tattoo artist last week um, during an ink therapy interview about how here in Atlanta, Georgia, we have a convention planned for March, which is ridiculous. That's crazy. Yeah, that's not going to happen. <laughs> yeah. um, Sucks, so I, that's going to be interesting to see if, you know, July, but, you know, as we mentioned earlier in the show, um, it seems like Australia has been handling this very well. Um, and yeah. so it seems like that'll be something to have. Yeah. So is that convention, is a traveling convention or are those three different conventions that they have? Or four? Um, Sydney, Melbourne, yeah, four. four. So it's like, it's the same person that organizes it and does this expo as well. I think that's in Brisbane. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so it's like, it's all linked. There's like a big competition that they do that is like each, you gotta, like if you win, points for each like one that you go to so if you win like a five points for a section on that day mm -hmm. at, like the Perth convention and then like every day and then you go to the Brisbane one and you like you can win more points there love it to eventually win like the whole total like prize love I it. guess love it yeah and yeah those cities are are pretty well spaced out around Australia right so it's kind of like you're doing a whole country tour yeah like you really got to be committed to it to to travel that far like that's awesome it's pretty, i think it's like i think it's like a five hour flight from here to perth and there's like there's nothing in between like here to perth like wow. there's nothing so yeah it's just like it's a flying thing there's like um perth is like on the other side of australia and there's like pretty much all the main cities are on like where we are sort of thing like along the coastline right and then yeah, so that's where m most of like everything is, and it's like you can drive there a few days. So, yeah, nice, nice. See <laughs> so yourself, uh, you know, entering in one of those types of conventions, or are you still because you're still in the apprentice stage? You're gonna wait it out. Yeah. Oh, I don't know. Hey, it depends if they if they cancel like the one this year. Then I don't know. I'd really like. Obviously, I'd like to win and be like. I don't know if apprentices can even win, but. You know, that'd be pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> I did. So, what, what does that timeline look like for you as far, you know, 
I've said it time and time again. I know people are going to get tired of me saying that, but her work is fucking epic. So if you want to follow her, let me just plug her in right now at Gia underscore tattoos underscore go look right now. It's fucking mm-hmm. amazing for her to be tattooed for a year and a half. It's ridiculous. Um, so when 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 is that timer up? <laughs> yeah, yeah, the whole apprenticeship. I don't think even like tattooists really know like how long the apprenticeship is for. But it's basically it's just till you like I guess you leave the studio that you're at. So um, I'll be leaving this one in March or right. April, I think. Yeah, and going to a different studio down the Gold Coast. I'll be moving moving cities, which is very scary. So, but yeah, I'll be like a, I'll be a junior artist when I move. So that's, yeah, it's pretty exciting. But I kind of ignore the whole like titles and stuff and just do, yeah. see what I do, yeah. you know? Right. Yeah. That's, that's wonderful. I think that's the best way to do it. Yeah. All right, we're going to transition into the last section of the show. My favorite, to, honestly, maybe it's not my favorite. Everything is my favorite. <laughs> Everything is favorite. my favorite. But this okay. is actually one of my favorite parts of the show is the game is it because you get to drink (laughs) oh yeah so so uh for this portion of the game i'm gonna be taking the shots uh, (laughs) gia it is uh actually thursday morning where she's at in brisbane and it is wednesday night where i'm at in atlanta georgia so i decided to take one for the team and be the drink for this game so uh, we are going to play Never Have I Ever. Um, and for those of you who are not familiar with the game, the way it goes is like this. So Gia has two cards. She has a never, or I, yeah, I have not, not card. Yes, she, so she has two cards. She has a I have not card and I have card. I will read a series of statements and she will respond with the card and letting us know if she has done it or has not done it. Okay. Gia has a minute afterwards to explain herself if she chooses. <laughs> you can just leave it up to the imaginations of our, of our listeners. <laughs> All right, so here we go. Number one, never have I ever sneaked into a party. When you say have not, yeah, I'm pretty introverted. Like, if I can avoid a party, I will. So love it. And then if you if if you are invited, you don't have to sneak in. You know, if you're gonna go, you, there's no need. Yeah, to go. yeah. <laughs> Never have I ever tattooed someone older than sixty five. Um, I think I have. Yeah, yeah. Well, like I'm, I'm gonna assume over sixty five. Okay. Yeah. I was, yeah, I didn't want to ask the question, but it's, it's hard. It's hard, man. It's hard to tatter your older skin. Yeah. But yeah, I have done it. And sunbaked skin too, huh? Because Australia is pretty sunny. Yeah, yeah. Sunbaked skin, yeah. I hear, is very challenging as well. Leathery. Skin. Yeah, I'll have a, yeah. That's why I got to get it all done before I get too old and look like a leather handbag. So good. I'm 30. Set. Good. Yeah. Good. <laughs> All right, never have I ever been robbed. Not? No. That's what I live in like I live in a good city. So okay. What about what about metaphorically robbed? Has anyone ever stolen a concept from you? Ooh. Not not enough for me to say that it's mine, sort of thing. Mm-hmm. But yeah. If like someone wants to, they can, because I will feel like but like I've yeah. made it. If someone wants to steal my stuff. Yeah, that's a very interesting. Let's let's get into that really quick. Okay. So somebody take because honestly, plagiarism is something that brings fire to my soul. Is for yeah. yeah. you know it does a lot of people. Yeah, it does. And because I because I feel like honestly, you're taking money out of somebody else's pockets. That's how you know it feels to me. And so maybe I'm an extremist about that, but hearing what you're saying you know it seems like you feel some sort of like esteem around you know if somebody were to to take one of your concepts is that sounding about right yeah yeah like I can understand where you're coming from that you'd be like pissed off I guess like it's like a slight twinge of like fuck those guys for stealing my shit but at the same time like 
the fact that I was good enough for them to steal it from me is like good for me. Yeah, you know? you gotta give yourself a pat on the back. Yeah, that's it. Okay. It's all positive. <laughs> Uh, never have I ever misspelled a tattoo. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, no. <laughs> so, Let's yeah, I, like, refu- I refuse to do script now. I'm just like, I can't do it. I did actually, it's it's actually really sad. I did a memorial, um, like a date for this guy. And um, this was like, this was a while ago, like, you know, first few months of my tattooing career. And um, yeah, he like, he spelled it right. I checked it with him. And then I don't know, the stencil got a bit smudgy and I put the wrong date. I understand. I put the wrong date on it. it <laughs> so don't do it. Don't do it anymore though. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to stick to uh, images from now on, not numbers. Yeah. And they can get tricky. creative. It's just, yeah, it's like, that was on purpose. Sure. So. Shout out to that guy for, for being a, 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 a team player with that. Yeah. <laughs> Never have I ever lied to my parents about where I'm going. Oh, who has it? <laughs> who has it? Yeah, honestly, if you haven't lied, either you have a bomb ass relationship with your parents or you're a yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna well, go my with mom. the latter. <laughs> yeah, I'm like I lied to my mom, but my dad is like, yeah, we're pretty G. Like I'd tell him pretty yeah. much everything. He's so cool. He's just Love like it. Whatever. <laughs> never have I ever gone number two in a shop bathroom <laughs> um I'm gonna say have not okay okay does it count our bathroom's like really far away so it's fine oh nice it's super yeah. convenient I love I it I know it's great it's great especially when you're the only girl as well because all the dudes are like super comfortable about all that oh my gosh and honestly I do think that <laughs> men are the worst in bathrooms <laughs> call me stereotypical if you want to but I just think I have yet to go into a place where there's majority men and have a pleasant yeah. bathroom experience have a nice bathroom yeah it hasn't happened yet there's always pee in places that there shouldn't be uh, <laughs> There's always missing toilet paper because yeah, I mean, or they like replace it instead of replacing like the roll, they'll just put it on top. Of- oh, which is the worst. There's germs <laughs> there. <laughs> anyway, never have I ever stuck gum under a desk. <laughs> yeah, I'm a cereal for it, especially like in the club and you. There's no bins anywhere, so it's like, where do I put my gum? Where? Yeah. So- and as a yeah. former bartender, I know I'm I used to do that shit. I still do it. I am surprised because I I used to bartend as well, and that was a fucking pet peeve. If I yeah. saw somebody do that, I'd be like, "Here's a napkin. Don't do that shit." That's hilarious to hear. Never have I ever forgotten an appointment. Um, did you say have more than I like double book. Mm. So yeah. I've got like, I've got ADD. So I like sometimes just like stuff just goes just through my brain. Mm-hmm. And just do you doesn't... have like a shop manager who's scheduling your stuff or you're, it's up to you? Um, so we do have a shop manager now, um, which is really great. So she does the bookings through the shop, but most of my um, appointments are through, like through me, like people have found me on Instagram and they'll message me. So yeah, it's just like, I've just got to make the habit of like, as soon as that deposit sent through, I like immediately go to my calendar, write that in. Cause yeah, it's been many times that I've like double booked or forgotten or yeah, yeah something. So calendar it's helps. Lot. It's a lot, definitely. But it is a lot to maintain. Do you, do the clients trip out on you about that? Or are they pretty understanding? No, they're pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, I've gotten better at it. Like, it's only been a few, but usually I'll just, like, oh, if you want to just come in, like, later, I'll stay back or, like, come in on my day off or something right. and fit them in. Good. Good. Yeah. Never have I ever tattooed myself. Yeah. It was my first, my first tattoo. It's tiny. My first tattoo I had to do was the little circle on my wrist. You see it? Oh my gosh, it? I love it. <laughs> and who's so it? <laughs> it's so tiny. Yeah. That was like so there was another apprentice when I first started. He was like a few years, like maybe two years in. And he was like, 
if you can tattoo a circle on yourself that looks decent, then I'll let you tattoo me. So yeah, I tattooed me and then I tattooed him. And it Love was it. Great. <laughs> Never have I ever sent a naughty text or picture to the wrong person. I don't think so. Okay. Good save on that one. Honestly, that's yeah. a lot of explaining and apologizing. Yeah. And awkward conversation. Yeah, <laughs> They've got like the unsend button now. It's great. It is. It is. Shout out yeah. to Instagram for that. Apple. Yeah. Fuck yeah. Catch up. <laughs> Cell phones definitely need to catch up on the unsend. Um, I do not appreciate that Instagram will tell you when someone unsends a message. Oh, does it? Yeah, I've received that. I don't know if they're still doing that, but I've received a couple of messages that say this person is it does. It does in your like notifications on the front screen, I think. Mm -hmm. See, I don't like, I don't have any notifications for it. So uh, it's just like, uh, if someone wants to unsend, so I'll have no idea. I have no idea. Love it. Love it. So this is the, you know, tips, everybody turn your notifications off. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, never have I ever copied another artist's work. Mm. It was a pivotal, pivotal moment in my career. Tell Very me about much. it. So um, there was this lady in Europe who's, she's a big, big tattooist, mm -hmm. um, like pretty well known. And yeah, I used like the face that she, she had like a Greek goddess mm -hmm. and I used like the reference for it. Yeah. And I changed mm -hmm. like a lot of the rest of it, but you can still, you can still tell. Right. Um, this was maybe at the beginning of this year. So like just sort of starting to get into my own designs and that. Yeah understand and um yeah and then I like I followed so I didn't know that it was her mm. and then I've done the tattoo like the day before and then I found her Instagram and I've followed her mm -hmm. and then she's like she's been like probably like oh who's this and then had a look and then seeing that I've tattooed like her tattoo basically and fuck I've never been ragged so hard in my life oh like she sent her like hundred thousand followers to like <laughs> I can, yeah, like, oh, like, oh, oh. <laughs> we might but have that was him. It is still on your Instagram? No, nah, no, nah, like, no, you it's taken <laughs> down and everything. Yeah, this is ages ago, but, like, from, like, that would needed to happen. So yes. from that, from that point, like, I have never copied anything yet. Mm -hmm. And it needed to happen. It's like, a tough lesson. It's a tough lesson. Yeah. And, and I feel as though, you know, there are times, like how we were talking about earlier, like plagiarism is one thing, but if you have a conversation with an artist and you're saying, hey, I'm thinking about doing this, like, do I have your permission? You know, is yeah. it okay with you? Then 100% go for it. But if you're not asking yeah. permission and you're just assuming that they're going to be cool with it. No, no, like it was definitely wrong on my part. And I learned my lesson that day. And I think that's like, that's what matters. Yeah. Learning, learning from it. Like we all fuck up, but you know, like I only did it once. Yeah. Never do it again. Like, oh, and yeah. I think it's and great I, that you learned it so early, you know? Yeah. You're done like, with it. Yeah. <laughs> and I guess you can't expect to get sort of anywhere if you're not doing your own, you like doing your own stuff. For sure. So. For sure. Never have I ever spied on my neighbors. Ooh, I love neighborhood drama. Fuck yeah. <laughs> the best type and yeah, yeah. Now you have new neighbors now that you're moving yeah you know anybody in the area you're moving to not really hey um the shop that I'm moving to I've done a few guest spots so it's yeah it's I know a few people there but I'm really like I'm pretty much a homebody so I'm like happy to not know anyone so I can just sit in my house <laughs> not have to go anywhere right. but no, I feel like I just moved in here maybe like four months ago and our like balcony is like just there and it overlooks the pool. <laughs> so we got like, sometimes we get like a hottie neighbor that comes and like chills out in the pool and I'll just go like sit out there and read my book, you know? Love it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just plenty of drama. Timing for you to just yeah. sit there and <laughs> yeah. read a book. 100%. I, that's what I love most about introverts. I feel like they are also like low key the shadiest because they're always going to know what's going on. With yeah, them. we know <laughs> everything that's going on. <laughs> I love the like neighbor drama as well, like with domestics every now and then. You know? Definitely. 
it sounds sad. I've got like nothing going on in my life that I'll like spy on my neighbors and get my drama from them. <laughs> love it. Love it. Love to hear it. The, it can, yeah. It's entertaining to say the least. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Last question. Never have I ever gone to a tattoo convention. Yeah. So I went to the Brisbane Rites of Passage one a few, like both of these were, bef- I haven't been to one while I've been tattooing because mm-hmm. there hasn't been any, but um, yeah, the one that I went to like a few years ago and I was like maybe a year before I started tattooing nice. and I was like fuck this is cool eh like it was just so cool and I was there for hours I went by myself I think and I was just there for hours and I was like it's very unlike me to go somewhere by myself so like you know that I want to go if I was like there and there for hours and just like chatting to people yeah. like I loved it well Gia I really appreciate you taking time to talk to us today again if you do not follow <laughs> Gia you need to right now. It's at Gia underscore tattoos underscore on Instagram. Again, she's in Brisbane, Australia. Is that how you pronounce it? Or is it Brisbane? Or is that just my American accent saying that? No, no, you said it right. Brisbane. Brisbane. Love it. Brisbane. Love it. Brisbane. Love it. Yeah. Um, so yes, thank you again. Um, I did not mention our sponsors earlier. Uh, shout out to Dark Skin Tattoo Tips, which is a page that I help co-create with angel rose from ink master and also bang and candles my girl uh bang ink is making a new candle line of scented candles that resemble uh beverages and desserts so go check out bang and candles and dark skin tattoo tips gia again thank you i appreciate your time thank you for early morning (laughs) future I appreciate uh, you making time for this and I appreciate your um, transparency during this conversation. Um, This will not be the last of our conversations. Once this pandemic calms down a little bit, I'm planning on doing um, a couple round table type conversations with a few tattoos. So yeah, yeah, I am excited to keep you involved and up to date on that. Yeah, well, thank you for inviting me to do this. Very exciting. The first of many, the first of many. So thank you again. To Gia, thank you to those of you who are watching, listening. Uh, make sure you follow Ink Therapy official Instagram page. Again, follow Gia if you do not right now. <laughs> queen of realism, even though she's apprentice level, I'm, I, I'm, I'm bestowing queen title upon her in this moment. <laughs> queen Neo <laughs> Trap. <laughs> Thanks again, Bye. Gia, and we will check y'all later. <laughs>